This is the Barbie typewriter on loan to me from Sarah Everett at Just My Typewriter, so I'm going to try my very best not to break it. The Barbie typewriter is manufactured in the late 90s and early 2000s by a toy company called Maheno. If you would like to know more about these plasticky machines, Sarah's YouTube channel is full of amazing and informative videos that dive both into how these machines work as well as the history. Other than that, I don't really have much to say about them other than the fact that they are very lightweight and very plasticky, but not much more can be expected from a toy. The Barbie typewriter is powered with a simple DC jack, and you can see that listed on the bottom of the machine, as well as the country of make. This particular machine is the E117 model. This machine comes with its original power adapter, which is unfortunately British, so we have to attach it to this very chunky adapter that Sarah was able to loan me as well. Once that's hooked up, you can plug the other end of the cable right into the machine, and then it's just a simple matter of switching the on switch to the on position, and listening to the music of the machine come to life. Aside from the more obvious issues, such as the questionable and flimsy construction, these Barbie typewriters suffer from one other problem, and that is the obsolescence of the ribbon cartridge system. Now, these machines take a carbon filament ribbon, which is very similar to the types of ribbons that a lot of electric typewriters take. Now, for most carbon typewriters, the ribbon will advance one full space at a time. The Barbie typewriter does not have a complicated ribbon advance mechanism. Rather, it advances kind of at random, so you need to make sure that the ribbon medium that delivers the carbon can do it over and over across the same surface area. And over time, these cartridges do deplete, which is what we're doing here today is trying to figure out a way that we can create a new medium to fit inside these cartridges. This particular cartridge here is sent in from the National Cryptologic Museum. The other two are from Sarah, who sent in two of her cartridges, including one that I've previously worked to restore the ribbon on. It's really easy to open these cartridges. You just have to pry at the ends a little bit with a flathead screwdriver. There's no hardware or adhesives that hold these two halves together. Once you have the two halves apart, you can see the inside is pretty much jam-packed with the ribbon material, which forms a closed loop. The advance mechanism features two interlocking gears that pinch the ribbon between them. There's also a thin piece of plastic that acts as a tension spring. The ribbon itself measures a quarter inch wide, and we can compare this to the cartridge I worked on last year for Sarah, which is a fabric ribbon that I inked up and used to replace the carbon medium. Unfortunately, the ink solution did not last for very long, and as you can see when we open this up, the mechanism has completely jammed. The primary issue that causes this jam is the junction in the ribbon loop that is stitched together. It makes it a little bit too thick and too stiff to be able to properly feed through the mechanism, and it causes things to bind up. The other problem with ink is that over time it dries out, and it can get a little bit sticky and gummy in some areas. So I have taken the medium out of both of these cartridges, and with the second cartridge, Sarah sent, this one features a slightly different mechanism with a rubber tire on a wheel that presses up against another wheel, which is seated on a piece of spring plastic. Unfortunately, the plastic has taken a set in it, and it's no longer applying the proper amount of pressure to advance the ribbon, but we'll see what we can do to fix that. Once all of the medium is out, it's time to move on to the potential solution which is carbon paper, which is commonly used to create copies. Now, if you cut this in thin strips, it can act as a ribbon, albeit a little bit fainter, but does retain the ability to be typed on over and over, which is an absolute necessity in the Barbie typewriter. To attach these in a loop, we're going to be using some methods and techniques from analog tape, specifically quarter-inch reel-to-reel -reel tape, which uses a splicing block. Now, when you want to attach two ends of tape together, you can feed it into the splicing block cut it and attach a new piece of tape with some anti-acid archival splicing tape. So we're going to be trying to use the same exact method of splicing analog tape to splice together the carbon ribbon for the Barbie typewriter. First step, of course, is to square up all of the ends of the paper, which includes getting rid of that one corner where there is a slight cut to it. Then we're going to cut long horizontal strips of quarter inch wide carbon paper. Once we have several of these strips, we can go ahead and start putting them into the splicing block. Now, they need to be fed into the splicing block face down, so when we attach the archival connecting tape, 
that won't be in the way of the carbon imprint. This first splice I'm doing is going to utilize the 45 degree angle cut which will give a nice fade between characters if you happen to type over the junction. This type of cut is also used in audio to give you an audio fade between two tracks. And when we flip that over after taping, you can see that we did a pretty good job of making sure there are no gaps, and that shouldn't represent as a big problem when it comes to typing. Once all the strips are cut, it's just a lot of the same process over and over again. Once the actual loop itself is created, we can go ahead and start putting it in the cartridge. The first thing to do is to feed it through the little wire loop that helps guide it, and then attach the loop to the cartridge. Once that's fed, we're going to make sure that the bulk of the ribbon is actually outside of the cassette, and that we've completed the path that the ribbon takes on the inside of the cartridge with just a little bit of the material. What this allows us to do is to close up the cartridge entirely, make sure everything's nice and straight, and then manually feed it through with the little advanced knob, which works pretty well, but we come to a problem when we're using the 45 degree angle cut, and as you can see here, the corner and edge of the ribbon gets caught on the inside of the cassette cartridge, as well as the wire guide. So going forward, it's probably best to use both a stronger tape and a straight cut. Now unfortunately, this carbon medium was a little bit old and it printed very faint. So I did a test with a normal typewriter and it was also faint, so I decided to go out and buy some new carbon paper and hopefully we'll get a more consistent imprint. So I ditched the original Mead carbon paper and picked up a pack of brand new stuff from Staples. I wasn't aware that they still made carbon paper, but I saw this in a video by Joe Van Cleef, so I figured I'd give it a try. I went through the exact same process of making a ribbon cartridge as you saw earlier, and instead I used straight cuts, and this one seemed to work pretty well. Once that was done, I also replaced the ribbon medium in Sarah's cartridge, but unfortunately wasn't able to fix the one that advances with wheels. The wheels just don't hold the ribbon in the proper orientation, so I just decided to fix up the other one instead, and she'll be getting both the cartridge and the machine back shortly. And that's about it. Another abrupt ending. So I'm sitting here doing voiceover work um, for the Barbie video, and if you've been a follower of my YouTube channel for any length of time, you'll probably um, have come across the problem that I consistently have with audio, specifically quality audio, because I'm always looking for a shortcut to get good sounding audio with very little effort. Um, now I know what you're thinking, this does not seem like very little effort. All that aside, I was doing my voiceover and I got distracted because I don't know if you've heard, but in the entire backtrack of all of this, there's been a slight knocking sound. And that is my recorder making a very annoying background noise. Um, I don't know why it's doing that, but it is. And as I'm sitting here, I open it up and I'm looking. We are actually recording right now, the machine's running. And I see this adjustment screw on the motor that's kind of wiggling and I fiddle with that and now it's fine. So. Fingers crossed that that was the actual fix, but yeah. Um, anyway, I sent the cartridge off that I fixed up for the Cryptology Museum. Um, I still have Sarah's typewriter with me right now, but I wasn't really sure what else I could. Oh, I guess I'm not. I wandered away from the microphone. You know what? We're just going to stop it here.